Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my channel is all about indoor home worm farming. And today we're going to be looking in on Blue, my 55 gallon worm bin that I made from taking a 55 gallon barrel, cutting it long ways, and then sticking the ends together with a bunch of screws. About every inch to keep this together because, you know, plastic uh, tends to bow apart when it's full. Okay, so let's take a look. I have been desperately trying to harvest enough castings to get me enough for my seed starting mix and then also for spring. So that's what we're going to do first. We are going to take the stuff that is dried off. I normally keep a, a fan in the basement here so that the castings can dry in between so that it's, uh, I have a better harvest every time that I come into it. Not enough to blow directly on the castings, but enough to move the air around. And as you can tell, I'm getting probably about 50% here. And then whatever is left over, I actually throw to the business end of the bin. So we're gonna do a little bit more of this. I have been doing this off camera a little bit too, just to try and get ahead. There are not very many worms at this end of the bedding, so I can feel pretty confident that I'm not hurting anybody by scrubbing it through the screen here. And if you do like the idea of these screens, they fit perfectly on a five gallon bucket. And I've had them for more than five years now. And as you can tell, they are perfectly sound. So the links are in my Amazon links below. Uh, if you want to get the exact same one I have, this is the one quarter inch. All right, so the types of things that are left over after about the six or eight months that it took things to slide to this end are things like pumpkin seeds, whole pumpkin or whole egg shells that didn't get ground up for grit, and then you have little bits of wood. And because I recycle my potted plants in here after they die, you're also going to see things like perlite, vermiculite, and, you know, a little bit of wood bits from potting mix. And even though the worms are not going to eat the wood, etc., I think it does a good job of keeping porosity in the worm bin and allowing more air so that things are less likely to get anaerobic, which, if you don't know, anaerobic is when there's not enough air in there and the bacteria start turning towards an anaerobic time, kind, that create methane and ammonia. So we don't want that. That's bad for the worms that can kill them. So one of the best things you can do is make sure there's enough air in your worm bin. I think we're doing pretty good. Gonna have enough room here. We did a very big feeding last time. I believe it was about seven gallons of bedding and about five or six gallons of food. And I just go through here and I look really quick to see if there's any plastic or anything that made it into the bin from my shredded paper bedding. Some people avoid using that kind of bedding just for that reason. I don't have a problem with just picking things out when I find them. It's not going to cause a problem for the worms and it won't cause a problem for the garden. It just takes a little bit more of my time. So I pick out things that I don't think are gonna make it. Some packaging is actually laminated, and so what might appear to be paper or cardboard might actually have kind of a um, plasticized layer in the middle, and sometimes you don't always notice that until after the worms eat all the good stuff off, and then what you're left with is that laminate in the middle. And then all of the good stuff goes back down to that end of the bin and gets extra moisture from the new food. And then they can give it a try again, give it a try and eat it the next time. Now, sometimes it doesn't just take one pass. Some of the things in this bin have probably been here for years. There are certain things like pumpkin stems, wine corks, other kinds of wood bits that have been left over from me recycling plant material in here that have probably been in here for years. And some people might say, why on earth would you do that? And I would say, why not? Um, it is not going to bother the worms 
to have that extra room and it gives them a little bit extra air. So it does cause me to need to sift because most people would not want this kind of a big chunk in their bedding, um, in their worm castings. I don't. Um, I don't want those seeds to germinate in my flower beds or edible beds. So I do sift. You don't have to sift. It's not mandatory. I do it because I like a very small particle size to work with when I'm working with my seed starting mix as well as for my bonsais. So we're getting to the point where it's getting a little bit too wet to sift. So we're going to move over and grab the next parcel. Right about here at the one quarter mark is where I expect to get most of my finished castings from. So let's move this guy down here and I'm just gonna grab the top layer off this. I don't expect this to be completely finished, but if it's dry, I might as well sift it a little bit and get rid of the stuff that's not done and also scope out for plastic and, and things of that nature. So just looking at the wedge method, if you are new to the wedge method, basically what it is, is you start from one end of the bin and you put your food in your bedding. And then after a couple of weeks, you just kind of scoot it over. Cause after, after things degrade for a while, they do reduce. So you just scoot it over and then you put your next batch of food and bedding. And after a couple of weeks, you scoot that over as well. And you continue on until you have a full bed like what I do and I continue to now that this end is done I will fluff it up dry it out and then sift it keeping the good stuff here for my bonsais and for my potting mix and then throw the stuff that did not get digested down to the active end of the bin and that's how it continues on and on forever let me go dump this in the bin with the rest of the castings. Now you might have thought to yourself, that looks pretty dry. That doesn't look like good castings um, as far as moisture goes. And you're right, it is not, but it is good for sifting. So what I do after is I go and I add water on top of those in the bin that they're kept in to kind of reinvigorate all of the microbes that live in the worm castings. So the next part is where I'm going to move things over. So I just take this part of the bin that's finished, fluff it up so that this part can dry. You can see how nice the castings look. We're gonna fluff those up and move them over. If I don't fluff, then they don't dry enough for me to sift. So there's not very many worms in here. I'm only seeing a handful here and there. And then I go to the next part here, which has slightly more worms, but as it dries out and as the food goes down, the worms slowly move to the business end of the bin where they will have more food and better moisture. So that's, that is one of the reasons why I do this is to encourage the worms to move. We're getting into the, the wetter season here. And so I'm not going to have as many troubles with the bin drying out which means that I am going to have to actively keep an eye on the moisture again to make sure it doesn't get too wet. And in my case, how I know that that season has happened is that because I have a brick floor basement, the bricks start having an appearance of being damp. They look like new bricks instead of old dusty bricks. And so I think uh, it is time to start keeping a closer eye so that things don't get too wet. Always taking out the avocado stickers. And I am getting to the part where you can see it is getting very wet here. Let's see, I've got my avocado that may or may not grow. I'm a little crazy that way. I don't know why in zone five I want bonsais that are tropical, but I do. So there we go. And right now, the only thing that I'm seeing that's recognizable are little sticks left over from plants that have died and then um, mulch that came in with uh, flowers. 
and plants that have uh, been fed to the worm bin. That's about all I'm seeing at this end here, except for maybe the vermiculite and the perlite. Those don't break down very easily. And as we get closer to the middle, the population of worms is increasing and the moisture is also increasing. So hopefully everything is moving nicely. These castings look very, very good, even though they're way too, too wet to sift, but you can still see seeds and vermiculite and eggshell and, and things like that. So there's still a little bit more work to do in the worm bin department. So I wouldn't want to dry this part out purposefully in order to harvest it because it still has more things to do. The worms, microbes, and bin buddies have uh, more work to do on this. So I wouldn't want to harvest this all at once. Okay, let's see, I'm getting close to the halfway mark here. Way more worms now. In regards to time, I would say that the part that I'm going through right now is probably on order of maybe four or five months since it was actively fed food. So there's no real particles of food in here, just itty bitty bits that the critters would, would notice. Nothing humans would look at and say that looks like a piece of food. Right. And so as we get to this center line here where it was screwed together is things that are a couple of months old. So I might start seeing more food related items. A lot more sprouts, pumpkin sprouts in here, melon sprouts. And just to make my life easier, I pick those things out and throw them down to the other end. I don't have to it is possible that the worms will take care of them. It's just something I do. Move down that top dry layer there. I think we were talking about, will they eat the avocado or will they grow it? Well, they made their decision on this one. Looks like they're gonna eat it. Let's see, two-year-old pumpkin stem here. It's always kind of nice to gauge things as to how long they would take in nature. Of course, there's not the freeze thaw in my basement, even though there is a temperature gradient that happens seasonally. Right now it is 68.9 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius above. And it's 40% humidity, which I think might be a little bit low. It's just the meter is in the middle of the room, not next to it. I think we can call those jean shorts done. Nothing left but the tag and a few strings. I'm gonna call it. That's part of my experimental bins that I do. I, I often will have little projects where I see if the worms can eat things. And uh, my son said, you know, do you think they could eat my khakis? And I said, well, they will certainly try. So I can put a link to the eat my shorts or eat my clothing list uh, at the end there if you're interested. They are still working on this big huge avocado seed. Those take at least six months. I'm starting to think this is more thread from the shorts. We'll take that out. All right. Now we're getting into some pretty muddy material here. So, I think this is a good part for me to move the camera down and then we can look at the business end of the bin. Okay, so here we are in the front half. They're making some very, very nice castings here. I do switch between my prepared bedding and uh, leaves, collect leaves to feed the worms. I think that the leaves do create um, more rich castings. 
I don't have any science to back that up other than visually that I can see that the castings are much darker. But the comments below, you know, do you have castings that you just use leaves with and just paper? You know, what does that look like? I would have to say that the castings made with shredded leaves probably are much darker than the ones made with shredded cardboard and paper. All right, we're getting real muddy here. And this was very much in need of getting some air to it. It's been about three weeks since we've looked in on these guys. So the increased moisture in the basement has definitely started to have its effect on the castings and how muddy they are. Lots and lots and lots of worms. I'm not sure when we're going to start running into uh, food. I see a, a stem of something there. I've been doing hydroponic herbs, uh, like basil. I mean, to be clear, it's basil for real. Um, and that's been really nice. I don't know why I didn't ever think to do that before. It's nice to have fresh herbs and stuff you know, right there on my counter to cook with. And then of course they eventually run their, their path and then the stems and whatnot get fed to the worms. Okay, we're getting there. Oop, beep, sticker. All right. Get another sticker. Very, very muddy. I gave them a huge feeding last time. There's the cork. Whatever other avocado they're eating. So all the dry stuff goes on the bottom. The wet stuff goes on the top and hopefully that'll even it out at some point. Okay, so moving all of those overs from the sifting project and we'll start looking to see if we have any concentrated worm balls in here due to the large feeding last time. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible when I'm trying to dig under here so I'm not grabbing the worms. So still nothing yet, so we'll keep moving things over. Anything that doesn't look like it's in process food, I do move over. If it still looks like it's being chewed on, then it goes to the business end. Pretty surprised I haven't ran into worms yet. Maybe I haven't got quite that far. Okay, we have got to be getting close. It's another avocado. I'm gonna put that dry stuff in the bottom here. Still super wet, not... All right, maybe a little worm ball. I don't know what I've got here. They seem to be into some sort of paper or something. Alright. So put that dry stuff there and just uh, go to the end and see what I can find. Ooh, I feel something squishy there. I think I just upended an avocado ball. Something smells citrusy. Okay, always find interesting things in here. So I'm still seeing paper. We added about seven gallons of paper last time. Because we took out so many, 
Ooh, that's a good worm ball there. Looks like the pumpkin has kept their interest for a while. Paper seems to be kind of molding. Yeah, there's a kind of a diffused worm ball here. Looks like there's a little pumpkin left. That's good. Every time I've come to feed these guys lately, they've completely gone through all of their food till there was nothing left. So I wanted to make sure they at least had some new bedding, etc. So it looks like we won't have to feed as heavy this time. So that's good. It's like, that's, that's my rule. If you are getting in your worm bin and there's still food, you really have to slow down how much you're feeding them. And if there's a lot of food and it smells funny, then, you know, don't feed them. Okay, so all that food food can go back at the very end. And this stuff that the worms are still in progress, but it's mostly bedding that can stay here. So I am going to get them some more food for the, the portion over here, because that's uh, probably about three or four cups of food. That's not near enough to get 20 pounds of worms, you know, the next three or four weeks, which is about how often I looked in on blue. So I am going to give them a little bit more food and a little bit more bedding to top up. So this part here, which probably does smell like food, doesn't attract any pest. So let me go get them some a little bit more food. I have started using reusable Ziploc bags. Um, you can't put them in the microwave, uh, but they will go in the freezer, which is the important thing for me that um, I want to be able to take the food and freeze it so that the food um, gets a chance to break down a little bit before I give it to the worms and also helps with not having things sprout. So there's some slow food. Let's see if I've got anything a little bit faster. Uh, I think I've got some bananas in here. But these are good. You do have to wash them by hand. You can't put them in the, the dishwasher or anything. Um, I'll put a link below. It holds six cups, so it's like a half a gallon um, or a liter or two or something like that. But they, they've worked so good. They've worked well. I have frozen them, thawed them out, and washed them probably about five or six times now. And I don't see any, you know, chance of them dying. I always felt really guilty about using disposable Ziploc bags for the worm bin because I know I'm going to be doing this forever. So I wanted to get something a little bit more sustainable for for the worms. And because of the way my freezer is, I can't have like an open bin I just throw things into. I need things to be able to tuck into nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. This has been a really good solution for me and could be for you as well. All right, I'm just gonna use that same tray that I was using for my sifting. I'm not sure how much it holds, but that covered up the food really good. And then I'm gonna get one more for on top of this. And this is my prepared bedding. It sits off to the side here in a bin. I'll put a little pop up there of what is in my prepared bedding. But I think it goes faster. I think the worms are able to make use of it more quickly um, because it has been aged a little bit with a few amendments. And that way I can go through more paper and more cardboard in a shorter amount of time because there are a lot of, a lot of deliveries to my house for Amazon or Walmart or, or whatever I buy online. And uh, these little guys and their helpers will help break that down for me so that I don't have to throw it in the garbage. All right guys, well, if you like this video and this series, I have a playlist that I can link right over there of the 55 gallon bin. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.